Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And this is episode number 34. Oh. Kiprasov? No, well, maybe. But you know what? I'm going to give an, an honorable mention to somebody who is not a shark. Austin Matthews. Uh, he uh. took his jersey off today at the Skulls competition when, and he uh, revealed the uh, Patrick Marlowe. Uh, Toronto Maple Leafs jersey, jersey underneath. Unfortunately, it was a Maple Leafs and not a Sharks jersey. That would have been cooler. It is what it is, but you know <laughs> what? It was a very class act by uh, by a guy that's kind of won over a lot of the San Jose Sharks fans, I would say. So, yeah. um, this episode, we're going to be talking about the weekend review and uh, the All-Star weekend so far and what we got to witness and check out. It was a pretty amazing experience. We'll be uh, letting you guys know all about that. So, you ready to start the show? Ready. Okay, actually, I, I can feel it in my throat. I just I need to take a sip of this really uh, quick. No, don't touch the cup. What do you mean don't touch the cup? D- don't touch the cup. Why can't I touch the cup? You're not allowed to I'm touch thirsty. the cup. I'm thirsty. I got to. The producer said I can touch the cup. I'm touching the cup. Touch uh, nobody's nobody's to stop me. It's going to blow up on social media. <laughs> So uh, yeah, I got in a little bit of trouble with, on social. A little for uh, for for touching the Stanley Cup, there which were, there were many many comments. Yeah, <laughs> people were pretty upset about that. Now here's the thing, I was raised the same way you guys were upset with me uh, for. I, I was raised to not touch the cup. However, when Mike Bolt, the keeper of the cup, says touch the cup, uh, I'm uh, who am I to, to to disregard that man's words? I mean he's he's. Touches it all the time. Well, it's a sacred thing. Let's see what he had to say about yeah, it. Yeah, we'll, well, I have a clip, so we'll, we'll we'll cut to the clip. Yeah. I'm here with Mike Bolt, the keeper of the cup, right? Right. That's the, that yeah, is the yeah. title? Keeper yeah, of the cup right. with okay. the Hockey Hall of Fame. So there's a, a common misconception that you explained to me earlier, and uh, it led to me touching the cup, which people are blowing up right now that I touched it. So I would like to get it from the horse's mouth oh. with the do's right. and the don'ts of, of the cup. Yes. Yeah, here's the thing. You're dealing with social media, and everybody's got an opinion, and that's fine. But okay. uh, look, every single fan... In every market, in any every every NHL team, <laughs> some fans have touched it uh, at one time or another. And if you look, we turn around quickly. You get oh, okay. the baby. You get the baby in the cup. There you right go. There. Young San Jose Shark fan there. That is awesome. So, um, <laughs> and then to go back to your point about everything. Yeah. I mean, we look. We've had players that show me pictures when they had their Stanley Cup day. Showing me pictures when they were kids, come up touching it, even yeah, giving yeah. it a hug, or it was at their hockey tournament. They got a picture with it. It's a fun superstition, but I look at the end of the day, it's a thrill and an honor to touch the cup, and I think fans should enjoy that. And then, uh, you know, the big the big superstition is not really superstition. The biggest rule yeah. is if you want to pick it up, go win it. Yeah. So, uh, so you got to earn the right to hoist it, but it's, uh, it's all good to touch. It's all about lifting the cup, and yeah, that's that's right, the big thing. Right. I mean, look, here we are in San Jose for the All Star yeah. Weekend, and we're gonna have a lot of shark fans come by through the couple world with the fanfare, yeah. and some will touch it and some won't. And then, like I said, every single. Fan at some point or another has touched the Stanley Cup in every market. So, Sounds uh, good. really, at the end of the day, you're just going to cheer harder for your team to win the cup. So, yeah, I mean, that's that again coming from the horse's mouth. Yeah, that's, that's what he said. So, uh, again, it was a common misconception I was explained. So, it, it led to me touching. Now, the one thing I will say is you kind of threw me out uh, under the bus there because <laughs> there was another picture right. where I was deliberately not touching it. So, I was the one that posted the picture yeah. on Instagram, Facebook, Reddit, Twitter, everywhere. <laughs> and uh, I honestly, like, I was doing it quickly, I think, from my phone. Yeah. And so I just like, oh, that's a good crop picture of Paul in the cup, and it's closer because the other one you're a little bit further away. I'm like, right. all right, I'll use that one. And then I, I look back at my phone ten minutes later and I go, whoa, what happened? Why is my phone <laughs> blowing up? And uh, that's why. Yeah, I uh, like I said, I, I was standing back, and uh, <laughs> and then there's the other one where I wasn't standing back, and man, it's not like I was hugging it or what's her name, Hayden something, that Hayden one girl, Hayden Terry, yeah, licked the cup. I see. Now that's just disrespectful, <laughs> yeah. but I mean, at least for me, it was just you know, it was a slight just put touch like that that was it you know so uh it was very respectful people just relax okay uh in any case that is uh behind us now well and i probably wouldn't have touched the cup <laughs> okay that's fair good for you <laughs> if if i'm sorry if he tells me touch it i'm touching it that's that's what it comes down to so um we can review we had two games first game not very good whatsoever <laughs> all in, around in florida and this was um after last week or the week before his game, I guess you could say, um, it it was yeah it didn't end so well. It was a six to two loss to Florida, and I know a lot of Sharks fans are saying Florida is a team that the Sharks should beat. Um, we've said this before. I mean, the Sharks there are no easy games in yep. the NHL. There's so much parity in the league, and the skill level is so close to one another that um, the Sharks aren't going to do well. And 
on a slightly different note is their road record is not very good. Yeah. Their home record is phenomenal. They're 17-4 and 17-4 and 4 at home and they're 12-12 and 3 on the road. Mm -hmm. So obviously the Sharks need to do some better work on the road. Um, granted in this game, it was Carlson's first game out um, so, uh, with his injury. Right. Uh, Vlasic was still out. Mm -hmm. So we're down two of our top four and I would consider Vlasic and Braun the top four pairing. Right. Um, two of our top four defensemen. Um, it's obviously not going to play out well. Um, and Florida does have a lot of star power on their team, young star power. Um, so they're not to be taken lightly. And uh, Luongo is a net, wasn't he? Yeah. And Luongo, s not always, but he seems to get the Sharks' numbers some, uh, a good number of times, and that seemed to be a, a, one of those nights again. Yeah. But... What you yeah, no, I thought uh, all around it was kind of a little bit disappointing because uh, the the team just didn't play well defensively, in in my opinion. And um, you know, we had we had an opportunity even going into the third. It moved us two two going into the third, mm -hmm. and um, uh, we we got that goal actually. The the equalizer, I believe, is what it was with. Uh, uh, Meyer, Meyer had yeah. scored a goal, and it was kind of controversial because it looked like he pushed the pad into the net. Even when they called it a goal, I was going, "Okay, if they challenge it, they're probably going to call it back." Same and, thing, yeah. Right? I thought, I thought for sure they're gonna, they weren't going to call that a goal. And yeah. I think the on ice was no goal. Then they went to review, and they said it was a goal. And then there was a coach's, ch or no? Yeah, it was Am a I coach's right? challenge. There's a coach's yeah. challenge from Florida, and they said the goal. Or the call on the ice stands, yes. and then they're like, "Well, what does that mean? It's a goal or a no goal?" <laughs> so um, it, I thought it was odd that he challenged it when they already did a review too. They reviewed to see that it went across the line, and they they saw that it did go across the line. Okay, and because he was saying no goal because he didn't see it go across. When they reviewed it, they saw that the puck did cross the line, and then the coach's challenge came in saying, "Well, he pushes his pad in the net," which, frankly, I, I mean, that's the way I saw it. I that's, saw it as him pushing it in. So yeah, I was from thinking, one angle, it definitely looked like he he was kind of falling yeah. with a stick and kind of pushed him towards the goal. Yeah. But from another angle, it looked a little bit different. I think that was the more important angle, obviously, because they called it a yeah. goal. I was a little surprised because Luongo jumped up right away and was in the ref's face saying, he pushed me in, yeah. which you're not allowed to do because if you did that, you'd see every scrum in the net, everyone <laughs> would be shoving their sticks into the goalies and right. pushing them in the goal. So uh, it's kind of a safety issue and to make it not get out of hand all the yeah. time. And, and it's a good thing that they did call it a goal because uh, how horrible would it have been for, for Timo Meyer to miss out on another really good chance. This poor guy, he needed a goal and he, he finally got one. So good on him yep. for that. Uh, the one thing I will say, though, is it was 2-2, two two, third period. Game's totally you know well in hand still. It's not going out of control yet. And then Evander Kane takes a double minor by cutting a, as a high stick and cut his lip or something like that. Mm -hmm. It was it wasn't really even like bleeding, but you could see blood. So it was kind of like it was one of those weird ones. It's where a flesh it's, wound. Yeah, it's a fle <laughs> it's a flesh wound, but it wasn't dripping. I don't know if that matters. Apparently, it doesn't. So anyway, he gets a four minute penalty and they capitalize. They score on both of them. Um, well, mm -hmm. I guess they score within the first however many seconds. Well, it, it becomes three first power plays if you score. The yeah, first so they have scored minutes. in the first like thirty seconds of that. So that power play goes away, and then they start on a whole new two minutes. Nine seconds later, they score again. So that was like the dagger right there was the double minor mm -hmm. from Kane and the way they capitalized on it. But you also have to fault the defense. Uh, I don't think the defense played very well in terms of um, it being in front of Jones. We saw Shimmick just lose it, blow a tire, and he just fell down on the ice. Uh, it's a very unfortunate thing, but, you know, things like that happen. You can't really fault the goaltender for that, um, and you can't really fault Kane for that either. Yes, he's sitting in the box, but my goodness, you know, if we're playing at any sort of defense in front of Jones on the in the PK, mm -hmm. you know, at least two of them don't go in, but, I mean, Shimmick just fell. Yeah, so it happens. Bad luck. Just bad luck, and uh, you're right, Kane going in the box is just an unfortunate stick Fraction penalty, yeah. which he leads the league in minor penalties, I believe. Yes. Um, and I know this is one of your bone of contentions yeah, with Kane about is. staying out of the box. <laughs> to me, he is a 30 goal scorer who's going to get over 100 penalty minutes, which he is now over 100 penalty minutes. Right. And he's the first shark, I think, since Owen Nolan, I think I threw that set out yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah. To have 100 penalty minutes and 30 goals, right? Well, he hasn't got 30 goals yet. Well, sorry. Possibly 30 yeah, sure. goals, but. <laughs> Yeah, twenty. Oh, I think the stat was, was twenty. 20. Yeah, I think twenty and a hundred, hundred yeah. which is still 
pretty good. That's phenomenal, yeah. yeah. I just wish, I, I see again, I don't have a problem with the high penalty minutes when it comes to fighting, roughing. Those are the intimidation penalties. High stick is, is a careless use of your stick, and you can intimidate somebody better by not hitting them in the face and making them bleed <laughs> and then getting scored on twice. That's There's there's a well, better he, way to go he, about he that. He didn't hit the guy on purpose. Like It wasn't like he... I know, but that's what I'm saying. It's a careless I use know. of your stick. Figure it out, right? So um, I would like to see him not take those types of penalties. I'm okay if he does roughing and, and fighting. I'm cool with that. But I would like to see him uh, back off on the amount of just stick infractions. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and and use that time wisely to maybe score a few more goals. I understand you know the the hundred penalty minutes, twenty goals thing, and I like that dynamic. I like his power forward aspect of his game, but I'd I'd like to see him cut down on the the unnecessary penalties. I'm totally fine with the ones where he's intimidating. Anyway, so the oh, end of the, the end of this game, yeah. Jones ended up getting pulled, and they put in Dell. Yes. Correct. So what I'm curious to know is what the plan was originally because yeah. was Jones going to play back-to-back against Washington mm-hmm. or was Dell going to start against Washington? I don't know because I, he, I mean, that's a lot of work yeah. two nights in a row against two teams that can shoot the puck pretty well. So yeah. um, I, I'm curious to know if, well, not that we'll find out, but if Dell was going <laughs> to start against Washington or not. And going into the Washington game, kicking over the Washington game, Washington Capitals were on a five-game losing skid going into the Sharks game, mm-hmm. and that game um, was crazy. That was insanity. That <laughs> I know. I was following along on Twitter, and there was a lot of Sharks fans that were uh, <laughs> pretty upset with Jones and yeah. and the defense and the team, and like, oh my gosh, like nobody can. The doom and gloom yeah. was just out. <laughs> it's like, oh wow. But you know, to their credit, um, they they came out. They they took the loss in Florida. And they came out the right way, mm-hmm. right? Twelve seconds in, they they put a goal on. Uh, they put yeah. a goal on the board. Yeah. I mean, it was the right way to start. Now <laughs> they they had to again. They they get eclipsed and they just go down two to one later on. But they they again they started the they right were way. Still at doing least. the intros. They're showing yes. the lines on the TV. <laughs> but then they scored a goal. Pavs yeah. just like tapped it in. Nice. Uh, and Pavs goal watch. Oh yes, that's right. Goal watch. I'm gonna I'm gonna do the sound too. It's so fun. we're up to 27 now. Yeah, uh, 27. Tick, it's tick, good tick, for tick, Pabs. Tick. Great for Pabs. Yeah, great for the Sharks. Love it. Cannot complain. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, uh, they they were they were tied. Um, oh, it, no, the, they weren't even tied. The lead changes were crazy. Going to the, I I can't even remember the exact. I don't how it actually went, know. I'm sorry. I don't even think they were. T- I think that Washington was the head the whole time. They just kept scoring goals. Yeah, That's and, what and it, was. it seemed like it was gonna be. Oh, this is gonna be another blowout. Yeah, and I'm thinking, okay, the Sharks want to, you know, finish this game off and get home. They got the week long break. Yeah. for most of them, and um, th- I was like, they're just gonna throw in the towel and give in and just be like on vacation mode. But I think Washington is kind of the same boat, and they are definitely struggling. With having a five game losing skid going yeah. into this game. So the Sharks end up coming back and tying it with two seconds left or well, one no, second. Well, left? before we even get to that, there's a couple of things about this game so far. There's Ovechkin got a hat trick in right. this game, right? Also, Kane, instead of getting two penalties or a double, he gets two goals, which hey, it's more useful <laughs> right yeah. than sitting in the box. So that was nice. And then at, up to that point, Hurdle got a couple goals, and it happened the exact same way on the power play. I call it power play deja vu because what it was was it was from the left hand side, the left wing side, is a uh, a pass down to I believe it was Pavelski, and Pavelski one times the pass right back into the slot where Hurdle sitting there waiting, and he just mm-hmm. one times it in, and it was the exact same goal twice. So uh, something that they work on came to fruition, and twice in one game, that's that's pretty amazing. So, um, yeah, you know, good on them for, for an awesome power play and for sticking with it. So they were down 6-4, to four, and I believe this was when uh, Burns came out of the box. It was like a 3-on-0. Yeah, 3-on-0. And Couture, I'm surprised. <laughs> Couture didn't pass or anything. He just took it himself. When, well, uh, 3-0. He had, he had the two guys for rebounds, if yeah. there was any rebound there. But, that's um, true. I also think maybe he took he got Holtby off his guard because he was expecting a pass. Yeah, and so he was waiting to come across his crease and open up the five hole and just put it in. And it was great. I I was jumping up and down <laughs> screaming. I was I was fantastic. Um, and then the goal. So with then yeah. So then two it's, seconds left. Yeah, you're right. It's six, amazing. Six five and there's you know five seconds left or whatever. Pavelski's got it behind the, the net. It comes on the boards and then he shoots it in the, in the scrum and it pops out and Kaner just knocks it in. Yeah. One second left on the clock. Exactly one second left. It was just amazing. 
So, you know, of course, I'm losing my mind. I scared my kids because I'm screaming <laughs> as loud as I can. So did I. I, was, did too? Yeah. I, was, holding, I was holding my daughter who's yeah. six months old, and I started jumping and screaming, and then she's about to cry, and I'm like, oh, right. And so I started <laughs> dancing around Damn, with her, and then, we're not, and then she was fine, and then she was laughing. It was great. <laughs> but <laughs> my wife was about to kill me for yeah, making her cry. But, for sure. Um, then, uh, then we go to overtime, and the first minute and a half – or maybe the first minute, yeah. um, it, it looked like Washington was going to score, and I think they might even hit the post. Yeah. Um, and then the Sharks ended up coming back, and Hurdle put it away for his hat trick. Yeah, Hurdle uh, brought the puck in, passed it over to Cooch. Cooch made it look like he was going to shoot the puck, and then all of a sudden it goes back to Hurdle. The funny thing was, he didn't get to one-time it. It almost looked like he, he grabbed it and bobbled it just a little bit, and I go, ah, oh, there goes the scoring opportunity, right? Usually I can see these things happening before it happens, and and you know when the puck comes across and he kind of bobbles at him and go, oh, there goes your shot. <laughs> but that's like apparently what he needed to get the goalie to slide just a little bit more, and he put it in the, in the far side yeah. of the post and boom in. And yeah, again, I think I scared everyone in my house. <laughs> yeah. I went nuts again. Yeah. So no, it was just a great game. Um, you know, if you like goal scoring, right? If you like defense, it was a terrible game. But you know, <laughs> the Heat Ryan combo just. I understand they got to plug him in because you know we've got injuries, right. but that combination is just. I mean, both sorry. those games with Carlson out, the yeah. defense just looked lost. They looked completely lost. They didn't know what they were doing, um, and you could see exactly how valuable uh, Carlson is to the team. And um, the first month or so, it took him a while to get in, get into it, and get involved, mm -hmm. and, and to really make a difference. And now he is a huge difference maker. And when you don't have him in the lineup, it is obvious. Yeah. And the Sharks definitely look lost. So. Hoping that Carlson is healthy when he comes back from the break. He is going to play in the All-Star game. We saw him today right. during the, the skills competition. So um, that looks well, but he didn't do a lot of warm-ups today. So he still seemed a little um, not 100%. Yeah. But there is still another five days after tomorrow or six days until yeah. the game. So. And I, I had a feeling that he would still partake in the All-Star game. I know that he had the injury and everybody's saying, oh, get the rest, get the rest. Well, the, the funny thing is, skating for these guys is like walking for you and me, okay? it's it, Yes, they're balancing on a little blade, but um, it, it's second nature to them, you know? So I don't think that him being out there and he's not doing fast as skater. He's not doing anything where he's breaking his ankles. He's just going out there, and he did the what was it, the perfect pass. uh, premier per passer yeah. competition. That that's the thing he took part in, and yes, he had to skate from one area to the other. But he was also walking steps, getting into the arena and everything yeah. else. So it's it, it wasn't hard skating exactly. At all. Yeah. yeah, so I think he's still getting his rest, guys. I wouldn't worry about that. And in terms of playing the game again, he's just going to be out there, just skating around, nice and casual. I don't think he's going to put a hundred percent into it. He's not going to be taking body checks. He's not going to be making hard cuts. So I think he's going to be just fine. I, I really wouldn't worry about him playing. Right. So that yeah. brings us into the All Star Weekend, which uh, we had the awesome opportunity of being a part of. We had mm -hmm. the media passes going on and everything, so we got into some areas that we'd never seen before. Still haven't been in the locker room. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> know what I mean? Uh, but it was just an, an all around fun time. I got to do um, a little like not me doing a presentation, but I got to be a part of a presentation that was all about the technology and whatnot that's uh, being implemented into the game in the years to come. And I'm sure you guys have heard a lot about it already, but uh, it was really awesome to be able to sit down in front of a panel and, and listen to the questions that were being asked and the answers that they gave and to actually see the technology and, and it working. So one of the things that they had was the player and puck tracking, and this is really cool. Uh, if you remember the Fox tracks, um, that old, you know, the glowing puck and it's sliding all over the place, this is basically that on steroids, okay? So the, the puck now has like a chip inside of it, and wherever it goes, they're able to see this within an inch on a, on a uh, virtual screen, essentially, right? So they're able to take this puck and make like a blue uh, line of not just like that, it, that streak, yeah. that trajectory, but like where the puck has been. It's so kind of similar to tennis. I think tennis uses the same thing. They've been using this technology for a while to, mm -hmm. to see, because it, it's a virtual ball and hitting a line of where it hits on the right. line. So it's very similar to technology. I think it might even be the same. I'm not sure, but um, they're also implementing it um, so they're wearing a chip in their back, right? Yeah. And the players are wearing the chips in their back, mm -hmm. in their shoulder pad, or their... Yeah, so their chest protectors on yeah. the spine, they have like a little pocket thingy mm -hmm. that's on there, and then they have the, the device uh, inserted into that little pocket. And so that actually allows them to track the player as well. So, I mean, you're able to see things like, you know, I mean, they already do stuff like time on ice and everything else, but you mm -hmm. can... One of the demos that they showed was 
they have uh, a couple of players that were skating down on the wings and the defenseman and where the defenseman's going and everywhere the defenseman goes and everywhere that the wingers go it draws that line on the ice so you can actually see that you know when the pass goes across the defenseman's scooting over and then the pass comes back and now the defenseman's way out of position and that so you can actually see the line of where they skated yeah um, they also had one where the goaltender uh for line of sight and whatnot the goaltender is sitting there um and he's you know angled a certain way and the puck's over here and the puck goes across and then they basically draw a line from the center of the net to the puck and if the goalie's over here and the puck's going across then they're showing that there's a lane that the goaltender's not covering and so when the goalie comes across you can see at the speed of he, that he's moving across if he's getting there in time all this different stuff that you're able to see now um in, in a more digital virtual world yeah uh, not just you know looking at the tv and saying oh he's too slow <laughs> right, you could tell by how much he's too slow now, mm -hmm. right? Because the puck is moving this fast, and so is he. Mm -hmm. So um, there's a lot of really good opportunities to take this technology and use it in a fashion that's going to enhance the game experience. That was one of the things that they wanted to highlight was not changing the game, but taking the game that they have and enhancing it for the viewer for the the entertainment value. Yeah. And I think uh, these are things that you know they can they can really get that value out of it by by just being able to track things and have the, the statistics being more um, like on demand. Everything that's happening in game is happening essentially in real time. Mm -hmm. And they're able to translate that into stats in real time. So you're not sitting there waiting for somebody to update the stat for you. It's able right. to do it on its own. And this is also going hand in hand with uh, the new partnership that the NHL has with MGM. Um, they're entering into the betting world. Mm -hmm. And so they're going to be sharing all this data with MGM for bets. And they're going to be, it's for things like, um, Odd, odd bets, not just who's going to win the game or who's going to score the goals, but who's going to be the fastest skater for the night, who's going to skate the most in terms of mm -hmm. distance on the ice. Not just time on ice, but distance. Yeah. And who's going to cover the most ground, who's going to... You know, th there's all these different little tiny um, smaller bets that, that they can throw out there, and they have it in real time. Mm -hmm. um, so it's the NBA has already done this. They've already gone in, in gotten a partnership with the betting. So... Um, the NHL is not a pioneer so much in this. It's already been done. Um, but it's great for the game, and it's also going to help grow the game. Um, they did some stats on when there's betting involved, even small bets like that, the the growth um, for people, I think it was for, I think they compared it to the NFL. Um, people who bet on the games were watching 40% more NFL games than people who didn't bet. And so now if you're allowing betting in NHL and you have a partnership and it's actually legit, mm -hmm. um, you're going to see the increase in ratings, which was obviously a driving factor um, for the NHL for this. So it's going to be interesting. Um, the other thing was some of these stats for the older players, you're going to see a drop in their speed. And, you know, they always say, like, that player's a step, you know, they lost a step. Yeah. Now they will literally know if they've lost a step or not. Yeah. And now this is going to be bad, and the NHLPA is not going to allow these stats to be used for uh, contracts negotiations, which I think is fair. I think you yeah. should give them uh, at least a little bit more time to see the stats. Um, I, and I understand the NHLPA's position. They have to take the player's interest, number one. So, um I'm totally fine with that. I'm I'm interested to see how much we, the user, get to see. Yeah. Because I, I I'm sure the players, the coaches, um, management, they're going to see a lot more than what we will be able to see, especially the the betting and everything else. Um, but this is going to be really cool to watch games, maybe simultaneously on your mm -hmm. laptop or on your phone. Um, while the game is going on, you can see real-time stats of everything that's going on. Yeah, and and they had a little bit of a showcase of that technology that you're you're talking about the. the um, like time on ice and everything. In, in fact, they also had where you can set thresholds. So if you want to set a threshold of like say 20 minutes time on ice for Brent Burns, when it breaches that, it gives you a notification. So for any of these other stats that you're interested in, you know, obviously set like one goal for like Pavelski, mm -hmm. you know, Pavelski goal watch, right? We want to, <laughs> anyway, uh, but for a Pavelski goal watch, if we're interested in, in knowing when he's scoring, we can set that up as a one goal threshold mm -hmm. notification gets sent to the fin factor and hey. boom we, we know like in real time not like we're not watching the game anyway but right. you know <laughs> so i mean they, they have that technology and and you being able to like essentially move players up uh, higher in the list that so you're just looking at the top of the list mm -hmm. i mean it's just sorting and that kind of thing is no big deal but um the, the whole package it's all basically available to you um and, and seeing all these different stats and whatnot the other thing i liked was you're able to select 
you know, even strength, uh, five on five goals or, you know, shots on goal, for instance. Mm -hmm. And if you want to say um, just those those shots, it'll show you just those shots and you could say for the whole team or for just this one player and it'll show you just that one player, here are the shots that he took. And I'll tell you where exactly on the ice he took those shots because again, they can puck in player tracking, right? So uh, there's there was that and then you can also have um, the high danger chances and what it'll do is it'll draw that area out for you where the high danger chance is and it'll kind of gray out the, the the shots that are outside of that and say, okay, these are the, all the players that got the high danger chances. And if you just select one player, Ovechkin, mm -hmm. um, here's how many high danger chances he's taking. And these are the ones that turned into goals. So there's a whole lot of really good stat technology that's going into all this stuff. So it's really, really cool. But one other thing about pucks, and it's not tracking, was um, <laughs> it, the coldness indicator on pucks that they've got going on now. This is really cool. So, yeah. And it was demonstrated. Well, for those that don't, don't know, Oh, yeah. um, pucks are kept frozen, um, usually in a, well, I guess in a fridge now, in a freezer, sure. that are on the side. So where the scorekeeper's uh, table is, they have a, a freezer and they keep the pucks in there and keep them frozen. And the reason is warm pucks um, bounce more on the ice. It's, mm -hmm. it's not as predictable. When they're frozen, they slide more and it's a lot better hockey to watch and play. So going back to that. Yeah, so... They, so what the, what the guy that was talking with me, what he was saying was, well, one of the things we found was that the 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 refs or the linesmen are taking the pucks and going, okay, you guys ready to do the face off? And they're warming up the puck, and they didn't really realize not, not that, on purpose. No, they're but just, they're just they're right. just sitting there doing it. Yeah. yeah. So then when they drop the puck, you know, it's bouncy and everything else. I mean, it's supposed to be you know only a couple minutes worth of play mm -hmm. because then the puck warms up and then they swap it out with a new colder puck. Well, so now they're really able to tell is this puck a puck that's a playable puck? It's just like the. The Coors Light. Coors Light. Yeah, the Rockies. The, Rocky, the Rockies are cold. Or right. the Rockies are blue. Yeah, so if the Rockies <laughs> are blue, you're cool to drink. Well, yeah. in this case, if the NHL symbol is purple, you're cool to play. Right. So uh, just a really cool kind of innovative thing that I just, I don't know, I just thought it was kind of interesting, you know? Yeah, the technology's been yeah. there for years, so it's it's smart to put it in there. Yeah. So I think it's cool. Then the other, the last little innovation that they showed was their VR, and this is basically people sitting down with, you know, goggles and earmuffs. But they're able to sit down and see the game that's going on without actually being able to go to the game or, or just watching it on TV. They can they can basically pick their seat in the arena, right, and just, boom, put these uh, you know, virtual uh, yeah. goggles on and be able to see everything that's going on. In fact, one of the things they were showing was the, the person that had this on was sitting on the virtual bench with the virtual assistant coach with a virtual <laughs> iPad with all the virtual stats. So it was like, you don't even need to own your own iPad anymore. Yeah. <laughs> you just like pop in this virtual world and be like, I need to use the iPad, you know? So uh, I just thought it was really cool. So anyway, that's all the technology stuff. Um, there's one other thing I wanted to hit on um, that, that we didn't get to touch on, um, the Roosevelt Park legacy project. I can't remember the exact name of it, but basically what they did was they took Roosevelt Park, which it was a ball hockey uh, rink, mm -hmm. and they totally refurbished it. I think they put like five hundred thousand dollars into like these legacy projects, kind of thing. Uh, and and you know we, we were out there, I was out there, and it was just such an awesome event. They had you know some of the mascots, with Sharky and, and a couple of the other ones. They had uh, all three of the San Jose All Stars, Burns, mm -hmm. Carlson, and Pavelski, and they had a whole bunch of kids there. And essentially, what they did was they uh, you know they did their whole. You know, this is in thanking the city and all this other stuff they and great job. Ribbon. Yeah, and they well, they cut the ribbon. You know, yeah. it's funny. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna reveal the magic trick. You know what it is? It's the big fake scissors, but it's it's a strip of Velcro that they have <laughs> for the yeah. And then they go to cut it, and the people inside pull. <laughs> and that's yeah. Didn't want to ruin it for you guys. Sorry. If, if, yeah, it's <laughs> those big like, scissors aren't real. No, nah, it's oh. and, and no Santa Claus cut it actually. Right. So anyway, uh, no, it was it was cool. Seeing uh, seeing that whole event go, uh, and and one of the I think it was the assistant mayor. So I can't remember the guy's name, unfortunately, but he he had a really awesome speech, and um, it was just really, really great community feeling that was there. And so anyway, after all that was said and done, they kicked everybody off the rink, and they had um, the players and all the kids and the mascots who so were all playing together. And it was funny because I have a, a clip, maybe we could throw it in there, but there's a clip of Sharky just with a bomb from the point. <laughs> he just fires it and this kid who he's probably never played goalie before because oh, they were no. like, okay, this is how you put it on <laughs> and this is how you hold the stick. And he was holding the stick like this. I'm like, no, dude, you want to go like this? So he put it the right way, but like, Sharky fired it and he fired it hard and this kid put his glove down and like grabbed it. Yeah, I was like, oh, oh, oh okay. And then on the other end of the rink, uh, Eric Carlson was playing with the other goaltender because most of the action was happening on one side. I guess they were getting pinned. 
and uh, Carlson was just flipping the ball, and the kid was catching. He's like, "Yeah, you know, good job." It was just really cool to see the guys out yeah. there, you know, playing with the kids, having a good time, and um, it was just one of those really good again community moments. Right. So. That's great. Great for the city of San Jose. And Gary Bettman was there as well, wasn't he? Yes, Gary just was there. Really cool. Yeah. Hey. Um, I don't know if there's anything else you want to. <laughs> no, I just it's it's cool. The commissioner of the league was yeah. at this event. Um, probably, that's probably why they timed it with the All Star event to get some yeah. more in there. But um, I think it's really cool. And I know a lot of people hate Gary Bettman. They boo yeah. him, <laughs> and he got booed. Uh, when was it? Today or all the yes, time? Yeah, every time he yeah. came out. Um, I I used to hate Gary Bettman. Okay, I used to just just loathe him, mm -hmm. and now I'm completely indifferent with him because. <laughs> He is exactly who the owners want, and he is the face of the owners. So you're booing the owners and what they want, and if they didn't like him, they, he wouldn't be in that position. So he is just the messenger, essentially. <laughs> so I, I can't shoot the messenger. I will continue to boo just because it's tradition. <laughs> I don't think he even takes it personally See, anymore. He's you, expecting you it. You boo Gary, but you touch the cup. Yeah, so... What's wrong I with stopped the? booing Gary. Okay. And I don't touch the cup. All right. So you can hate me for touching the cup. You can hate him for not booing <laughs> Gary. Okay. And we will move on because there are skills competitions that we got to see tonight. Yes. From the media box, that was kind of a different look for me. It was pretty up high. Yeah. I mean, was, you know, I'm not complaining. It was pretty cool. Yeah. It was a good view. <laughs> it, was, it was really cool. And we had a bunch of TVs next to us so we could see replays yeah. of, of the really good goals that we saw yeah. on the, uh, the, saves, uh, the save streak competition. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, they started off with uh, the fastest skater. Mm -hmm. And no surprise, right. McDavid just blew everyone out of the water. McDavid was the fastest skater. But I think the person who stole the show yes. wasn't even one of the all-stars, Kendall Coyne of Team USA was there because Nathan McKinnon was injured and mm -hmm. he couldn't partake, but I guess he didn't want to be suspended for a game, so he showed. Um, so anyway, uh, Coin takes his place in the fastest skater competition. And she did really well. Let me tell you, she 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 wasn't the fastest one out there by, by any means. She was the means. first one to go and she kind of set the mark. Yeah. And I, I mean, just watching her was like, Whoa, that was really fast. Yeah. I mean, it, I, I saw other guys skating, and I'm going, oh, she was faster than that. And then yeah. they crossed the line, and I was like, no, nah, he was faster. I'm like, wow, that's... Yeah. I mean, she was chugging out there. She was, like, going really, really fast. She beat Clayton Keller. She did. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that was the only only guy that she beat, but, I mean, she's going up against all-stars, and right. specifically ones that are picked for fastest skating. Yeah. And she hung with the boys. It was great. I think she got some mad respect, too, from oh, yeah. all of them on the side. I think oh, they yeah. were blown away. They were talking about it afterwards in the, the interviews um, about her and yeah. how fast she was and everything. So um, that was really cool. I'm really glad they, they involved uh, involved her and a couple other players in, in some of the other uh skill competitions mm -hmm. um so yeah so mcdavid won again yep uh and then the next one was Puck skills Puck skills yeah. and, and patrick kane went first i believe and he set the mark oh yeah and he usually wins this one um until johnny hockey <laughs> came in and uh beat him by two seconds i think one or two I seconds don't know. It, it was it, he did it a masterful job i mean so here's what the what you have to do you've got the stick handle in between like 10 pucks yeah so back and forth back and forth back and forth and then uh what was the cones. second part of that it was the cones yeah cones. so you have to do like a slalom with the cones yep and then after that there's these like gates Yep. And then each gate has like three holes, a, high, a medium, low, and a high. And depending on which one's lit up, you have to put the puck through that hole. And they randomize it, so it's not always yeah. the same for every player. It's not like high, medium, low every time or something, right? So uh, I think it was high first for him, then low. Then he had to put it through the medium one. He banged it home, and yeah, he beat him by by a pretty decent margin. Yeah, and Kane's was easier because he had high, medium, low. Yeah. And so on the low one, he just shot it right through, and it went right in. What? But Gaudreau did the same thing. Yeah. He shot it through the medium one and in, so it saved some time. Yeah. Uh, but there were some guys that really struggled with that one. Um, so that was kind of funny. Not too. as much as the premium passer kind right. competition, which, frankly, you know what? I, here's that a one's, things. I think, the hardest. That's definitely the hardest. But it's also the most boring for fans when you're having a hard time hitting these mini nets from way out it's there. It's almost embarrassing, too. It, it really is, yeah. and it doesn't it doesn't showcase their skill as a passer. It showcases how difficult it is, and that's it. I think what they should do is mic up the players yeah. on the side, uh, just <laughs> heckling them, right? Because you know they are. Yeah, probably, You know they're yeah. just heckling them. So I think that would be, I mean, I don't know if they do. I'm sure some of those guys are mic'd up, but I think they should showcase that a little bit more yeah. of uh, the banter given to the guys because I think that ma that would make it more interesting and more in yeah. fun for the fans to I, hearing all I that. I think they need to retool and overhaul that whole competition 
still have premium passer competition because I think it's important to know and to showcase those skills, but to also know who are the best players in the league in terms of just passing. But I don't think that's the right way to do it. You, very rarely are you standing still and trying to loft something up and over. You know, a, there's, it just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, but Carlson does it all the time. But Carlson had like the worst time. <laughs> so I don't know. I just I don't I don't like that one. Um, I, I like that there's some skill involved, and obviously it's the hardest one. But I don't like how long it takes. It yeah. takes like two minutes. It drags every it time, drags. and you're just watching this poor guy just yeah. constantly missing. And it's you know, it's almost like dude, just throw in the towel, man. <laughs> I know. When they start missing, I'm like, oh, that's what I would look like. Yeah, out there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If I wanted to missing. see me out there, right. you know, I would just yeah. But then by some it. of these guys just drain them, and you're like, oh <laughs> man, yeah. these nets are only. They're like this tall and like this wide. They're small. Right. And they're shooting them, I don't know, they're probably 20, 30 yards away mm -hmm. and landing them over something and into it. Yeah. That's just, it's incredible. Well, not 20, 30 yards away, more like one yard away on these shots. These save, uh, the goalie save one. What's it called? The uh, Save streak. Save streak, yeah. So basically the goaltender is supposed to make however many saves in a row, as many as he can. Uh, they do nine shots, and if he starts making a save at the ninth shot, they just keep going until he, a goal goes in. Right. And so the record on this one is 14. Vasilevsky. Flurry. Yeah. Has holds the record. There you go. And Vasilevsky had eight uh, for this competition right. until... Until uh, the very last goalie, Henrik Lundqvist, the king, <laughs> goes up and it gets to, I think it was the last shot uh, against the captain, and he saved it, and so then you keep going until you lose, and so that was one, yeah. and then two, and then three, and then four, and then five, and then six almost went in, and everyone's like, oh, he's going to get close to eight, and then he stops seven, then eight comes, and everyone's on their feet, and he stops eight, and so <laughs> everyone goes nuts, and then he stops nine, so he wins it. And he celebrated. Yeah. And then he stopped 10 and 11 and 12. Yeah. And then 13 finally scored on yeah. him. So it came down to the wire. It was actually, it was pretty thrilling and exciting. And then he was like, oh, is he going to beat the record of yeah. Flurry's 14? And Flurry was a little uh, worried, I think, on the side. <laughs> but, um, but he didn't. So, but and and some Hendrick, of those man. goals though, some of those goals that oh. that went in were amazing. If you have the opportunity, go check it out. It's probably on NHL site for all yeah. the the shootout stuff that they did. And uh, some of those goals are just nuts. Who had the was it Gaudreau's or was it uh, Barzell had one too? Yeah, there was one where it just went like went back and forth oh, and then McDavid. from the paint straight up in the yeah. corner. Just McDavid like, painted the corner from one. It's just nuts. It's like the puck is magnetic on these guys' sticks, yeah. and then they just lift it. Like I don't understand how you go from here to here, and you haven't gone that way at all. Yeah. You know what I mean? So just totally out of this world bonkers. And the last, no, the second to last was the hardest shot. Yes. Hardest shot. Burns. Burns was the last one to shoot in the first yes. round, and he missed the net. <laughs> he fired it wide. <laughs> and, and he has a very hard shot, and it was kind of disappointing because... Yeah. Um, because he missed the net. It's in San Jose too. Right. So then they. So the second round, you start with the slowest and go to the fastest to try and beat him. And so Burns had to go again, and he got. He jumped into second. Yeah. He got a hundred and one point something. Mm, I think it was ninety. No, he was over hundred. Was he over hundred? Yeah, he was over hundred. Oh, okay. Uh, he was him and Carlson were the only ones that got over hundred, I believe. I don't know. I can't remember the specifics. <laughs> uh, but John Carlson of the Washington Capitals ended up winning it. One hundred and two point whatever miles Eight, an hour. I think, yeah. yeah. My goodness, like. Just a big booming shot. Yep. I believe the record's 105. 108. 108. Yeah. Wow. I, I can't remember who that might be. It's either Chara Weber? Or, or Weber. I think it's Weber. Might be Weber. I think Chara before had it. Yeah. Yeah. He hasn't been Either way, that's a once you get over to triple digits, I don't care how much yeah. faster it is, it's you're, you're, you're still in triple digits. Gonna have a hard time <laughs> stopping that. And yeah. if you do, you're gonna have a hard time breathing yeah. after that. So, yeah. Uh, what so was the last one? The last one was, the, one was uh, accuracy. accuracy shooting, which. Yeah. It's, it's slightly changed over there. It used to be four dishes in the corners, mm -hmm. and they would actually smash the dishes. Yeah. They didn't have to clean up the ice. It was a little bit of a process. Now they have um, light-up ones that will turn off, or they turn to a different color yeah. um, if you hit them. But they also had a fifth one in the middle. Um, and and the, it's a little bit off the ice, too. Yeah, and, and the way that they did this, again, like he was saying before, it used to be four that were in the corners, and you could just pick whichever one you wanted. Now it's five, and they light up, and you have to hit the one that's lit. So... Yeah. Little bottom bit. right corner lights up and you have to hit that one top left corner lights up you have to hit that one the center five hole one lights up you have to hit that one so mm -hmm. it's it's takes a little bit more skill 
um, than just being able to pick the four corners also because there's five, but that you have to pick, you have to hit the one that they're telling you to hit, not yeah. just going in whichever order you feel most comfortable in. So um, we got some pretty cool shots of that, and yeah. we'll probably throw those up on social and everything too. Yeah, and Pasternak won that one of Boston. Yeah. Pasta, that's his nickname, <laughs> which is a fantastic nickname. Yeah, uh, yeah he, he was quick, I think uh, 12 seconds, 11 or 12 seconds, and it was, it was fairly close to the record, mm -hmm. uh, I think a half second off or something if I'm remembering correctly but um, it was amazing it was it was a fun event and the arena was sold out uh, it was pretty packed I think most of the seats were all filled up too so um, it was a great event for San Jose yeah. it was awesome hosting it um, I personally like the skills competition a little bit more than the actual all-star game um, you will be there tomorrow yes um, I will not be okay. but um, I I really enjoy the skills competition to me that's it's different You've seen the players in different light. A lot of them, I don't even think they didn't wear their helmets. So you just yeah. um, you get to actually see the players a little bit more, and their personalities come out a little bit more. Um, it was really exciting to be down on the media, being in the media, and being on the floor and interviewing and asking questions. Which we got to ask a couple questions of some of the guys. So um, and we're gonna put together a little thing at the end here, yeah. so you can see. Um, but yeah, what what do you think of the whole weekend? So I thought far? it was really amazing weekend for me. Uh, I mean, I, I again, I've never really been part of media. When we started this show, it was just two friends that decided we wanted to throw our thoughts up on YouTube, and uh, I mean, we've we've grown quite a bit since then. But um, you know, I've I've never really had that type of experience being a part of media before. Yes, we we do this, but this isn't. This is just us having yeah. fun, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, a very, very different experience for me. Um, I'm looking forward to it uh, to tomorrow where we're doing the actual All-Star game. I'm probably going to hang out with the media folks for a little bit. And then I actually have a ticket, though, so right. yeah. I'm not going to sit up there. I'm going to sit in my actual seat. So, I, I mean, I might record a little bit here and there, but you guys are going to be watching it on TV. You probably don't need any clips from me. So uh, I'll probably just sit there and enjoy the game rather than, than uh, try to – do anything for the podcast or for the for the show here. Right. So, uh, but yeah, it was it was definitely a great fun experience. Thank you so much to the NHL and to San Jose Sports Authority for making that happen for us. Mm -hmm. um, we'd love to do more events and any of the any other events that you know we, we go to. Obviously, we'll, we'll happily document for you guys uh, from from our perspective that maybe you guys don't get to see all the time. So, and a quick shout out to the blue coat intersection. Oh yeah, tonight uh, he was a fan of the show. He knew exactly who we were and found us on Reddit a while ago and. San Jose State guy. He's yeah. going to start playing hockey there. So, uh, good luck to you yeah. in, in uh, San Jose State hockey. And I don't know. There's, is there? Are we good? I think we're good. I think we're good. Okay. So enjoy the little montage of some of the videos and clips that we uh, put together yeah. from the weekend. So yeah, episode 34 is uh, in the books. Like I said, uh, if you're listening on a, as a podcast, you're probably not going to hear this stuff. But uh, if you want to pop over on YouTube and mm -hmm. uh, catch the last little bit of it, we'll, we'll throw something together. Yeah. So that does it for this week. Um, we will see you guys next week. Next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. He's had a great career so far, and uh, you know, as was mentioned, the game's getting younger now. Uh, what advice do you have for the younger players that are in the league that maybe they could be sitting in your seat one day? Uh, you know, I just enjoy the game. Uh, I think a lot of players uh, they lose a lot of the game. It's uh, it's not easy when you're not winning and things are not going your way. It's easy to kind of get sidetracked and um, kind of forget why you're playing. Uh, I think when you uh, you keep uh, loving the game, uh, good things are going to happen. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the show. You can support us by following us at The Fin Factor on Twitter and Facebook. You can also find us on Instagram as at Fin Factor. If you're listening to us as a podcast, please, please, please give us a five star review. And if you want to support our show, share our episode with your friends. Please leave us a comment of what you thought of this episode. And if you want us to cover anything else, let us know.